Step into the enchanting tapestry of Kashan, where every fabric shows a tale of centuries-old craftsmanship. A few months ago, we made a video about the art of Persian carpet weaving, and in it we showed you a general process of how a Persian carpet is made. We told you about layers and layers of work that is put into a single carpet. But the thing is, that's not even the half of it. In this video series, we will dive deeper into the pool of talent and sweat and hard work that goes into the incredible craft and art of Persian carpet weaving. In this episode, we will visit the historic city of Kashan and we'll show you what Kashan has to offer. Welcome back to Narciss Hostel, where we talk about the art, food, and culture of Iran in our cozy hostel in the city of Esfahan. Today, we talk about the weaving artistry of the city of Kashan. So, if you watched our video about the old Persian bathhouses, you probably saw that we took a trip to Kashan. On this trip, we wanted to show you the carpet and in general the weaving arts of Kashan. Kashan city is located 200 kilometers or 130 miles north of Isfahan. This city isn't just historic, no it's older than that, it's by definition prehistoric. The remainders of the civilization of Sialk, which is in today's Kashan, dates back to 6000 BCE. And there have been people living in this vicinity until today. That shows how important the city has been throughout history. Kashan is right in the middle of Iran, which in a way makes it the place where north, south, east, and west are all connected. This geographical characteristic, among other reasons, has made Kashan the place where commerce ruled. The Grand Bazaar of Kashan tells you the tale of merchants who sold their merch here to be shipped all over the country. And the most common among them all is none but the carpet merchants. Through years, selling carpet has been a big part of the Kashan Bazaar. And still, you can find countless different carpet shops as you walk around the city. So, it is normal that you can find industries related to carpet all around Kashan as well and among them traditional textile work is a wonder to behold. In the August of 2023, the World Craft Council recognized Kashan as the world city of traditional textile weaving. The art of textile weaving using traditional methods and machines is a form of art you can hardly find anywhere else. We visited one of these traditional workshops. As you walk into the workshop, it's as if you've been sent back in time a few hundred years. There are two weaving looms that are specifically designed for weaving. To make fabrics, first the threads are prepared by making the spool. Each of these spools are mounted on the loom with a weight hanging from them to keep them from moving. Then the weft passes through the warp from side to side and puts layer after layer to create the fabric. The weaver controls where the threads go with their feet. One thing that you always see when you watch masters at work in any work of handicraft, not just textile or carpet, is that they work in a steady rhythm, a beat that gets them going in a steady pace and flow. It showcases their mastery over their craft. The result of the work is fabrics like this, which are used as so many different things. It turns into fabric for tabletops, for wearing a scarf, or for turning it into any kind of other clothes. <laughs> Textile work isn't technically carpet weaving, 
but many principles of weaving in general apply here as well. There are so many different kinds of textile crafts with different types of materials and patterns that each require a different machine. I mean, when you hear the word machine, you might think of an industrial metal box of bolts and gears, but these machines are mostly wooden and their designs go back five or four hundred years. Each of these patterns has a different name and a different technique to weave. For example, this one is called the Zilu, and waving it is just mind-boggling. Just watch how this master weaves only one row of threads from his memory. Yes, he has this pattern memorized, and so he doesn't even need a weaving map for this. Look how he clamps the color that he needs for specific knots on the row on top and then passes the specific threads in it. It takes so long to finish up one zilu. Again, not as long as it takes weaving a carpet, but still it's incredible. Of course, zilus or any other kinds of work are not as expensive as carpet, and that's completely understandable, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't take a lot of time and a lot of skill to make. If you come to Iran and visit Kashan, make sure to visit the textile museum to see the different types of traditional textile works and equipment and also to see masters weaving right then and there in front of you. So as I said before, Kashan is a collection of different crafts all related to carpet and weaving. And one of the very important steps that we didn't talk about in the last video is coloring the threads for the carpet. In Kashan, you can find many coloring workshops that deliver material to everywhere around Iran. Here is one of the workshops. In here, the raw threads are put into a massive pot of boiling water and the coloring material is added to them. If the thread is for cheap carpet weaving with less quality, they use chemical dyes. Chemical colors are cheaper, but they're not water resistant, and the color would wear off if you pour hot water on your carpet. That would make the carpet a pain to wash, and also the color would wear off after maybe 60 or 70 years. But if natural coloring materials like flowers, insect shells, or sea and land minerals are used, your carpet could not only survive a few hundred years, given you and others after you take good care of it, but it would be easy to clean and it wouldn't cause any sort of rash or allergic reaction. This would make the carpet way pricier, but it is worth it on all fronts. So after the threads are properly boiled with the coloring agents, they are rinsed and hung out in the sun to dry. They are then shipped to everywhere in Iran. Coloring the threads is a crucial part of weaving a carpet. There is another step after the carpet weaving is done that is very crucial in handmade carpets as well. You see, when the weavers are making knots on the loom, they put a knot and then cut the thread at a length of usually 2 to 3 centimeters or about 1 inch. Imagine one small carpet, like 1 by 1 and a half meters, which is 3 by 5 feet, has anywhere from 1 to 1 and a half million knots, all done with hand. So, it's not humanly possible to cut all of these threads equally while weaving. That's why all handmade carpets need a touch-up and polishing after weaving is done. Many cities send their carpets to Kashan for this polishing. So in this workshop, they put blade to the work and cut all the knots to an equal length. It's just like mowing the lawn. This could be done using a blade machine that cuts the threads and vacuums it, or it could be done by hand 
like this. It takes much longer to do this by hand, but the feel of it is quite different. When the carpet isn't polished and cut down yet, the pattern looks fuzzy and blurred. But by cutting the threads and getting rid of the excess, the pattern becomes much sharper and the colors become vibrant and saturated. Doing this job isn't simple at all. It takes an experienced craftsman to trim the carpet uniformly. If they trim the carpet down too much, or if they don't do a clean job of it, the value of the carpet takes a dramatic fall. We also visited another carpet workshop, this time in Kashan, with 10 looms, 10 carpets rising up at once. Each of the weavers was working with their own style and rhythm that they were raised with. Many of these weavers learn and start weaving carpets from a very young age, when they are 8 or 9 years old. So they each develop different hand gestures and movements that honestly is not even visible in the final carpet. The carpet of Kashan, like the carpet of Esfahan, is famous for being extremely precise. The carpet is accurately symmetrical and the size isn't far from the standard format of carpet sizes that the seller tells you. For example, if you're buying a 3 by 4 meter carpet, it shouldn't have more than a few centimeters in accuracy from each side. If it is inaccurate, it means that it's a cheap carpet. To be honest, we went to Kashan with the goal of understanding the difference between the carpets of Kashan and Esfahan, how they look different or the different patterns that they have. But when we talked to the experts of carpets and antique carpet dealers, we learned that the differences aren't that simple and obvious. Yes, there are a lot of differences in the carpet's patterns from different cities, and we will get to cover those in other videos. But the differences between carpets like the carpet of Kashan or the carpet of Esfahan aren't that simple. There might not be any difference in the patterns and the design. The significance of the origin of the carpet is more of a factor when you look at carpet as a work of art that is sold and bought through time. Imagine buying a painting or an antique book. A part of the value of that piece would be determined by seeing where it has been, where it has gone, what journey it has gone through, who has touched it, who has owned it. And you would try to find its origins. That's where the origin of the carpet comes to play too. Expert collectors and merchants can determine from the condition of the antique carpet and the details of its patterns and also the back of the carpet how much this carpet would be worth and in what city and what condition it was created. There was a time that the carpet of different cities would show a lot, like how many of one pattern was produced, who made it, and by whose commission was it made. All of these would affect the value of the antique carpet. But right now, it doesn't really mean anything much where a carpet is created. There are Tabrizi designs now being made in Esfahan, and there are Esfahan patterns made in the city of Qom. So buying newly made carpets and trading carpets that are collection pieces are two vastly different worlds. Kashan is a wonderful city, filled with layers of history and art. The architecture is marvelous and even though it's not that big of a city, it is filled with beautiful handicrafts, beautiful buildings and beautiful people. So when you come to Iran, put Kashan in your travel plan and then come straight to Esfahan because we are waiting for you at Narsis Hostel. We also made a video about ancient bathhouses of Iran and the customs surrounding them, and in it we visited the bathhouses of Kashan too. Thank you for watching this video. If you've ever purchased a Persian carpet, tell us about your experience with it in the comments. And if you have any questions about carpets 
ask it down below. If you learned something from this video and enjoyed it, consider liking the video and please subscribe to our channel. In the Narcissus Complex channel, we try to show you what Iranian art, culture, and food has to offer. And we'll show you Iran both outside and in our hustle in the center of Isfahan. So consider hopping on a plane and giving us a visit. We'll see you in the next video.